Hey guys, what's up? This is McKinsey Chriswell here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my new set of presets for Adobe After Effects to emulate film for free. Alright, so we all know how movies have always worked. You shot your movie on film and edited it, and it was shown in the theater. Let's get recently. We've added visual effects, post-production process, which has led to a uh, computer element. You would still shoot on film, everything would be scanned in, and then printed out of the computer, printed onto film. Obviously, that naturally led to people actually shooting on digital. Um, but that does not mean people do not still want the look of film. There's tons of ways to emulate the look a film. If you look at half of the articles written about digital, it's all about how to get the cinematic film looking image. There's tons of great plugins out there to do this. A lot of them cost money. I just wanted to try and create a free alternative, which is a series of presets, as you can see over here. We've got quite a few. We've got everything from 8mm all the way up to uh, a more or less IMAX simulated look. So, uh, what we've got here um, in this particular shot is a 35 millimeter black and white emulation. Uh, this is emulating Kodak Vision 3 black and white uh, film, 35 millimeter of course, uh, and you can obviously tell we've got some nice uh, black and white, uh, really nicely contrasted. It's a little bit blown out, but that's just the way it was shot. However, this is a uh, raw sequence, as you can see, the humongous file size over here. Um, so we would be able to fix that fairly easily. Um, but the main thing, of course, is the grain. Here is what the image looks like right now uh, with the grain. And you're probably not able to see this as well as I am, as it's been recorded and compressed to fit on the internet and all sorts of crazy things have happened to this video. Um, but you can kind of get an idea. Here's uh, the shot without the grain, and here it is with it. And this is by far my favorite thing about film. I love the look of grain. Some people like it less than me. Some people just want the colors and the tones of film. But for the most part, you're going to want to also get the grain. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this plugin in full detail. It's of course built in After Effects to work with video, but I'm going to be using a single still frame to demonstrate the power of this plugin just so that we can save some time and uh, rendering time with the uh, videos. Okay, so here's my image I'm going to go ahead and be using. I'll drop it into a new comp. Uh, it's a 720p image, it's actually 1080 by 720, but it'll work for our purposes. And uh, so here is our digital image. Here is, uh, it's a little bit edited. It's gone through Photoshop and been converted to JPEG. It's been knocked down a little bit in the uh, stops of light as it was a little overexposed. But we're able, but we're, uh, able to um, work with this image to, in order to help simulate film. Of course, right now, it's very obviously digital looking. There's uh, shadows are way too high. Uh, and normally you would the way you would do this is you would grab a curves effect, start working on the shadows, maybe add a vignette, then you would go and work on the grain, you might try to sharpen it, you might desaturate it, there's a whole lot of stuff that you would do, and it's still definitely necessary for some shots to do the process manually, but for other shots you're able to just throw on this preset. So let's go ahead and take a look, starting all the way at Super 8, and uh, we'll go up to 35 millimeter. The IMAX and the 65 millimeter are just, you know, they're just kind of there. Okay, so here is our 8 millimeter um, grain emulation. It's a little intense by default, but uh, we can actually bring down the grain to a lower level. Uh, here's a lower level. Um, we can also go in and actually kind of tweak the settings a little bit. So if we just wanted to make the grain smaller, we could always do that. 
what's great about the After Effects presets is not only do you have the slider set up by the people that built the uh, plugin, but you can also see all the effects and still adjust them. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at what controls we have by default. One is a sharpening effect. Uh, this isn't, you're probably normally not going to want to go any higher than it's set by, um, but this is basically to kind of emulate the um, sharpness of film. It's not necessarily true anymore, but digital has been always notoriously bad for bringing a very soft image, and definitely with DSLRs, you're going to get a much softer image than you would shooting on film stock. So this is meant to try to make those, uh, um, fix that error. Of course, you know how sharpness works. You can only go so far, but it is going to help get you there a little bit better. Um, of course, the contrast, contrast, um, film is, you know, just has a different contrast than digital, and this is going to hopefully fix that. Mainly, it's um, darkening the shadows a little bit uh, more than you would normally get with film. Um, I mean, with digital. Okay, so it's a lot darker. It's kind of hard to see over all this 8 millimeter grain. Uh, in which instance you're actually able to turn off the grain. A lot of people don't like the grain. I'm a fan of it, um, but you do have the option to just set it to zero. And I'm going to do that since this is the nasty 8 millimeter, which you would probably never be shooting on anyways. Uh, but then, of course, we have the vibrance. And the vibrance just knocks down some of the color, as film is normally a little bit more desaturated than digital. You can, of course, actually turn it in reverse and bring up some of the color. Uh, it's a cool thing to have. Uh, and norm I'll leave this at about 15, though. So that's just a really quick way to set up the image. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a few other um, preset stocks. So we'll skip over 16 millimeter IMAX and 65 and take a look at this uh, 35 millimeter preset that we have. So it's the same thing, more or less just with some much nicer grain. Okay, so by default, um, we again uh, are gonna wanna adjust it a little bit for this shot. I'm actually gonna turn the sharpening off all the way as I already did, um, just because it really does not help in this particular instance. Um, the vibrance, I'm gonna set to zero because it was already pretty desaturated. Uh, and then the grain, I'm gonna actually tone down a little bit, okay? So again, just some very nice grain over here. Uh, it's intense, so of course you would want to turn that down if you don't like it. Um, but all your stylistic choice, uh, our shadows are being darkened. Uh, you know, just again, emulating the look of the film. Okay. Uh, so next up we actually have quite a few um, black and white film emulations, and they're the exact same thing. You drop on a preset, and is going to uh, hopefully try to emulate black and white film. Now the one thing that's really different about the black and white film is that the contrast level is extremely higher and that's just because, uh, well, here, let's see, if we were to drop on a color negative stock and then um, try to bring the vibrance up to 100% which would make it black and white, you can see uh, it's going to be very even and that's not what you want with black and white when you're shooting black and white you're gonna want a lot more contrast so as we slide it up it's starting to look more like film more like the image you're gonna get off of a black and white film negative so we just went ahead and put that contrast in there of course it can be adjusted uh, just a really easy hopefully set of presets to uh, speed up this workflow a little bit. It seems like you're always emulating film no matter what you're doing. Uh, so, you know, hopefully this will be a great way to speed up your workflow a little bit for free. If you do have the cash to go out and get uh, an actual software that emulates film, that's definitely recommended. But, uh, you know, hopefully this will help out for the people that don't have the cash to go ahead and buy that. Um, but I'm Mackenzie Chris Well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out my site if you want to see more like this, and uh, I'll see you next time.